Hello everyone and welcome back to Critique Clinic, the video series where we give our patrons advice on how they and you can improve your miniature painting. Oh boy, we've got some good miniatures to look at this week uh, and I'm going to try not to be as biased as possible on the first one. So let's jump straight in. So this one comes from Jack who says, Hi James and George, I'm hoping to get some feedback on the first five Marines I've finished for my second company, Blood Angels. Uh, only 95 to go. Uh, trying to get as close to the box art style here uh, with the correct iconography as well. Uh, any feedback to further push the paint job would be much appreciated. Oh boy, we have some Blood Angels to look at. So I'll try and keep the bias turned down as much as possible. But um, before we we dive straight into this, I just want to say that George and myself both had a good look over the, the pictures that you submitted. And, um, and we think you're a very, very competent painter. Um, I think there's a lot of things there that are very positive. Um, but we are going to be a bit more, a bit more sort of like deep with the, the 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 feedback that we give, just to really aid you as much as possible. Yeah, um, I think when you're at this sort of level of painting ability, it's quite important to go uh, pretty nitty gritty with the feedback because um, it's those finer details that are a bit harder to chase. Um, and I think that it's easy when showing models like this to someone to just get like really really nice complimentary feedback. Um, but in the spirit of of this video series, we're hoping that everyone can improve. Um, so don't think I'm being too harsh on you. These models are absolutely fantastic. Um, but that being said, we're going to try and help you out with just those heavy metal techniques and uh, see if we can't get these improved a little bit more. Yeah, uh, I'm going to start with uh, with something that, again, is often overlooked. I think it's, it, it's your basing. So the model's uh, fantastic. Like there's lots of things on there that are very positive. Um, however, the basing for me just really uh, is, is is a bit lacking. And, and I'm sorry to be so so direct in the, in the terminology that I'm using. However... You've got a lot of intricate little details and, and, and real, real refined execution across the surface of the miniatures. The bases just look like they're, they're, they're unbalanced to the miniature. So, for example, like the orc skull on, on the base, for example, like you, you, it looks like it's had just a quick dry brush or something like that. I'd put as much effort into edging it as I would on the actual Space Marines. Same as the rocks that they're landing or jumping off of, things like that. You can add really nice complementary tones, like you can do purple glazes or green glazes on the rocks to look like, like maybe some moss or subtle things like that that's on there. And that green or purple will contrast uh, the, the red armor really nicely and just give a really good color relationship between those areas. It's part of the issue with the sort of heavy metal style really is it's like you've got to do every single detail to the same standard as every other part of the model because otherwise by comparison they stand out as looking like poor, they look more poorly painted than they actually are because yeah. everything around it is so good. Yeah, yeah. It's like a by comparison sort of thing because I think this sort of basing is is nice and neat and like there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. But I think if it had a different sort of miniature on top of it, it would have made more sense. But with like an heavy metal style model, especially one as vibrant as a Blood Angel, yeah, yeah. Um, I do think they are like you said, maybe, maybe perhaps like a little bit bland. I think just some. Even just some like little like tufts or something like that would have just been really nice to see. Yeah, I think that you put, you've done really well using a neutral tone, the tone that you've used. But I, again, putting some tufts on there, like there's some rebar that's sticking out some of the concrete. You could put some like orange glazes on the orange, like sort of pin shading on some of the details on those rebar to show like rust build up. Like you should go as in depth on the basing as you do on the miniature. Like I always say, this a a, a, a base is a frame to a miniature. It should complement and be to the same standard as the miniature. And that's something that I think that. It, just on these miniatures from looking at them, it's kind of a bit overlooked. I think as well, I'm just zooming on some of these. I think there's perhaps just a little bit um, of undercoat showing through where you've primed all these red. I think so just making sure to get a nice full coverage with your basing material as well. Um, super, super important. Um, and on that note as well, while I'm here on this Marine, I think the thing that uh, stands out for me as well uh, on these models is uh, it's not just the painting. It's the way that the models have been cleaned. Um, and I can actually see uh, there's some, some spots here. Um, for where you've been cleaning the models so before any of the paint's been applied. Um, there's a mold line that I can see here going through the foot um, and there's a little bit of a dent here, I think where perhaps the, the knee plate hasn't been sanded or, or cleaned um, nice and smoothly. Um, it's little things like those that I think are, are easy to miss when you're cleaning the model because you think, oh, when it's painted, I won't be able to see it. Um, and then obviously when you put the paint on it, it is still visible. Um, and I think those things do like, I always say it's like break the immersion. So you're looking at a model, even in one, you know, even in the heavy metal style, while it's not realistic, you kind of get put yourself in that universe almost as if it was like a comic book or something. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think that kind of pulls me back out of it and reminds me that I'm looking at a miniature. Um, so I think being really, really diligent with things like that when you're cleaning the models, such a, such a massive impact. We've said it before on Paint Perspective Podcast, like building and cleaning is often really, really overlooked with your models. But the more time you spend on the preparation of the models, the, the better you're going to succeed in the painting of those models. Because um, we've all been there where you're painting a model and then you see a mold line that you've missed. And then you've got to go back and you're worried that if you clean it now, you've got to go back and paint it and then is it going to look worse? And you're in this sort of 
weird spot where you're not sure whether cleaning it will make it look even worse than not cleaning it and so on. Um, so I think just being really, really diligent with things like that um, when you're building and putting your models together, um, I think we'll see a massive, massive improvement to your painting because when you're painting those areas, it's going to make you not look at the mold line. You're going to go, oh, wow, how nicely is that painted? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, uh, while we're looking at this miniature, I'll, I'll throw in the next thing that I wanted to comment. There's, there's two things that I wanted to sort of just, just chuck in on this, on this on this specific model, but they are demonstrated across the, the, the presentation of miniatures that you provided. Um, first couple of things is like, we'll talk about edge highlighting, but I just want to point these out and it's kind of synergizes nicely with what, uh, what George is saying about sort of like the quality of like the overall execution in, in all aspects, building, cleaning, painting. looks like while you've been painting, you've had some, some, uh, either, either some, uh, some dust or something get into the, into the paint or something that's gone on there and it's built up. This could be from, from potentially something that's been, if you've airbrushed it red or whatever, these little things, sharp blade, like the really sharp uh, blade, and just nick them off and then just repaint them smoothly over them. They really do detract from the paint job. You can see these things that are like stuck on the model. Um, it's just something to be conscious of. And as I said, like it's just texture that you, you it doesn't make sense that everywhere else is super clean, super smooth. And then you've got these marks. You've got one, you've got here some on the shin, you've got on the on the groin here, you've got this, put this the mark here as well. Um, but that leads me on to, to the sort of like the edge highlighting, which I'm going to talk about. So overall, your edging across all the models is, is actually really nicely executed. There's quite a lot of consistency on the edges. However, I think there's a bit of this, a, a little bit of disparity in the stages that you've done across the model. So for example, if you have a look, the belt buckle has got two or three, you can see the chunky thin and you've got like a corner highlight as in the third stage on there. Possibly even four highlights. Possibly four even well. highlights, yeah. but again if we look here you've got a lot of bleed on this uh, this bit here um uh, the other thing that's straight away visible to me is you, this armor panel here this is an extra bit of ablative armor on top of the thigh you've got the actual armor panel of the thigh there's no that makes no sense that this this edge here is to this these these stages and then this edge here is a lot more desaturated you also got a, a, the belt buckle here that's got three, four stages of highlights on it. There's no reason why this edge here should not have the exact same amount of highlights as the belt buckle. I think that's or, or potentially been missed actually because just because it's so close to the to the edge of that, I think perhaps there's a there's an issue here with not seeing that this is the end of that plate. It kind of looks like it goes behind the, Pot the belt. But potentially, it, yeah. Knowing this kit, that is actually the end of the armor plate because you can see it with this one here. Yeah, exactly. You've got the ribbing here. Yeah. So imagine that ribbing is actually behind and underneath where this belt buckle is here. Yeah. And this line here that I'm drawing out of the mouse now is actually this line here. Yeah. Um, so like you said, I would actually like to see a, a full beans edge highlight going across that C as well. Correct, yeah. And and, and again, another thing is, is a couple of things I just want to point out is like, I can see you've done like an L shape or an upside down L shape highlight on the grenade here. If you look at heavy metal style models, in the individual grip parts of the grenade, so these squares, they are all individually chunky and thinned with corner dots as well. So you should go, to use that pun that we always use, but you should go full beans on this as well and do exact same amount of highlights. You've definitely got the brush control um, I think it's just a case of just getting in the mindset of absolute consistency in all areas on the miniature, especially if you're doing that heavy, heavy metal style. Um, I think that's something that you should be conscious of. But overall, like the edging is, is decent. I think there's, there is refinement that can be done like these, these, uh, these little square port covers. So these are little bits of armor that are cover like jack ports or sockets and things like that. That's what they are. Um, I would, I would literally make sure that you're edging this multiple stages, so chunky and thin, just like these squares here that are on the grenade, for example. So you, you should really be doing everything to the same to the same refinement across the surface of all the miniatures. But that's being very, very granular about it, and, I, and I'm, you know, trying to obviously give you the best feedback that we can. Cool. And then one final thing, just to note, um, leather's funny with the heavy metal style. They can kind of approach it in a few different ways. It kind of depends on who's painting the model, I've yeah, yeah. especially over time. I think they've seen a little bit more variety now. Um, that being said, I'm spotting a bit of inconsistency across your own squad of models. Um, so for example, if we look at this Marine over here, you can see that you've got that classic traditional heavy metal sharp edge highlights all the way around. Um, but then we, if we look at this fella over here, you can see that you've gone for like a more scratchy sort of looser textured sort of finish. Yep. Um, for me personally, I would pick one or the other and then stick with that across a whole squad because um, when you've got models painted in the same style that look different to each other it, it starts to like i said before on um, previous episodes like it breaks the immersion um i personally like i think that this style marries up more with the the heavy metal way of doing things i think this is a better look personally that's my opinion if you're more into the the scratchy sort of style um then by all means that's up, entirely up to you um, but I would just be a bit more consistent across models. Um, because I think as well, like it, even if you wanted to go 
uh, within within itself, it's like you've done that scratchy style on the pouches, but not on the belt and not on the straps. So yeah, uh, for me personally, I would just sort of stick stick with one thing, um, just for consistency's sake. Yeah. the The other thing that the, the last thing that I'll throw into the mix on this one is I think is obviously your pin shading as well. So what I mean by that is obviously just where you've recess shaded in certain areas. So if we have a look here, for example, um, again you've got quite consistent across the pads and a lot of the areas of the miniature. But if we look here in the neck joint, um, there's quite a lot of bleed on there. And also up here on the jump pack, there's quite a lot of bleed. One on the little uh, um, the vent. Over yeah, there and also well. on yeah. this little little vent port here as well, you've got quite a lot of bleed. I think that you you really just need to refine your, your pin shading quite consistently across the models. I think that's one thing that, that is a little bit uh, to a lesser standard than the rest of the miniatures. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really good. Um, the one thing I would say is fair play for doing 95 and other Marines and doing the whole second company. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a massive nod to you. Um, massive and nod as well for the, uh, for the brown base rims. Fantastic choice. Of not going to, they're not technically brown, George. They're more <laughs> like a sandry dust kind no, of no, color. I'll take but, it either way. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what color makes sense. Um, <laughs> Uh, and actually, that would give you a bit more contrast to the actual uh, the ground cover. Uh, we'll did, agree to did. disagree on yeah. that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but, um, but overall, really, really good. Um, and the the last thing, obviously, in the most biased statement I can uh, say is that um, is that maybe when it comes to actually building the models, and this nods back to the thing we're saying about it, part curation is something that I really sort of like would would recommend that you that you take if you're doing a chapter. Maybe get some heads that are chapter specific because then that will actually also add the flavor of the chapter in the parts that you're using also. Uh, but other than that, really, really great job. Yeah, really nice work. Uh, really good to see. Okay, next up, Paul Nichol says, I uh, wanted some feedback on my latest whips. Uh, would be delighted to get some forward direction on my NMM and my blending. So just as a caveat, George and myself are not like super, super experts on non-metallic metal. It's not something we do loads and loads of. Obviously, we see a lot of it, um, both in the studio and also just in, in general painting. Uh, blending, we definitely can help you with. That's something that we, we're both sort of like sort of experienced with. Um, one thing I would say is obviously we're, this model is a work in progress and we're obviously going to take it at face value. So, um, so just to say that, obviously, if it was a finished model, we'd be able to directly give more sort of linear feedback on this because it's a work in progress model. We You might be finishing something and we comment on it and it's not finished. Does that make sense? So just take that into consideration. Uh, from the get-go, uh, I think for me, the cloth is something that I wanted to to talk about. I think the light placement is actually quite nice uh, with regards to sort of like where you place the lights and things like that. Um, I think that obviously the shadows are, are placed in the right areas. Um, I do think that you could push the contrast on that. I think that's something that's going to come up quite a lot in this, in this specific bit of feedback that we give across the model in various areas. Um, whether that cloth is finished or you still have more highlighting to do, again, taking it at face value and seeing it for what it is, I would possibly add way more sort of tones to it as in to, to brighten it up on the brightest areas and the flatter areas. Um, the other thing I was going to say is because you've got, um, because you've got, it's going to, by the looks of the colors you're using, you're using a primary color triad. So you've got the yellowish kind of gold, you've got obviously got the, the blue cloth. Uh, and obviously the red accents for the missiles and for the braid, uh, for the beads and things like that. I think something that you could actually do quite nicely on the cloth is actually use like a purple to add that uh, cold shadows or add sort of like different shadows into the into the into the cloth because that will harmonise nicely with the red accents and it will also work with the blue quite nicely. That's something potentially that I would throw in. Um, smoothness looks nice and smooth, which is great. Um, I think again, just writing it and add more contrast to it will really add a lot of interest to the actual cloth on the miniature. Um, I think in regards to the NMM, this is something that I've definitely struggled with on the past and I see a lot is I think it's been viewed as one overall surface a bit too much rather than the individual volumes of each specific part. I think with NMM, you've kind of almost got to treat each little part of detail as its own like entire complete miniature. Um, so what I mean by that is painting this shoulder pad as like one finished complete model because the way that the the, shot, the highlights and shadows form behave on this is kind of irrelevant to the rest of the miniature. It's its own volume, it's its own shape, and it's going to be having light hit it. While the light might be universal and it's hitting, you know, say all of the details from above, it's going to be its own specific use case and where those shadows fall. Um, and the reason I say that is because I'm noticing loads and loads of contrast in areas over here. Um, but if we look at like this sort of crest on the top, for example, it's super, super pale and desaturated by comparison. Um, Again, over on the shoulder pad, there's some nice dark shadows all the way into the recesses here. But going onto the arm is, is is a little bit inconsistent in that regard. So I would probably, if NMM is something you're looking to improve, I would maybe start and do some practice on some smaller details, like some sub-assemblies, some smaller individual parts to completion to get kind of a better understanding of what it is you want to execute. Get your recipe like dialed in and figured out what am I going to use for my darkest shadows, what colors am I going to use for my brightest highlights, get all of those tones 
uh, sort of figured out in advance and then take that to the miniature in you know either sub assemblies or working in small areas okay first of all i'm going to paint the shoulder pad next off i'm going to paint the crest on the top things like that um that's how i would approach it personally i'm sure plenty of other painters see it in different ways and that's entirely up to them that's just the way that i would look at it personally just based on the way this has been painted um that being said going into some of these areas that have the more dramatic contrast i would actually say they do read nicely as the gold um particularly with the foot down here i would say this to me is the area that reads like correct uh, in the NMM style the most um, of any of the surfaces. So I'd be looking to do more of what you've done down here elsewhere on the model, if that makes sense. Yep. So with the nice uh, brown, dark tones uh, blended up through the mid-tone to that nice bright highlight uh, on the upper edges, nice smooth blending the whole way through, I'd be looking to apply that elsewhere. Um, obviously, this is quite a difficult miniature, I think, to do this on as well. Um, these sisters miniatures are, are very very Super small detailed, yeah. i know this is an upscaled one but the details are still the same scale if that makes sense um so i think this is going to be quite a difficult one to execute that on and it's quite busy as well especially in the sort of chest area of all those Third recessed lead. details yeah yeah um I, I think the other thing is like george and Audi, what he said i think contrast is going to be the biggest thing like to really sell non-metallics it's having a significant amount of contrast that actually makes that object read I, again going to the thing that i always say it's a plastic model what you do to it in painting transforms it from plastic to metal fabric cloth leather etc so and, and we've seen as well i'm sure you've seen it with other work it's like the the contrast and the light placement is more important than the smoothness of the blending correct yeah and focusing on the smoothness of the blending i think is kind of seeing the forest from the tree sort of thing where you need to get the light placement and the shadows and everything overall correct and your colors right and everything and then the set up the smoothness is like a stylistic execution. exactly yeah. smoothness comes yeah. after that yeah. yeah yeah like you can have non-metallics that are very rough and they read completely correctly because of light placement and i think that's something just to just you know choose your avenue where how you want your finish quality to be on say finish quality you want your finish aesthetic to be and then and obviously go go with that um but overall yeah like uh, a, a really really great model obviously more than Val is a phenomenal uh sort of like centerpiece miniature um you're doing great i think just need to obviously keep refining and, and keep obviously just pushing the contrast on it in various areas i was going to comment on the copper part of it on the gun cowling but i don't think that's finished from looking at it just being honest with you and if it if it, if it is and you're and you're watching this but paul i definitely would say that you you should make the contrast and the, the brightness of it balanced across the miniature so like if the silvers have got a really high bright point and the gold's got a really high bright point then the copper should do also because it's 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 other it's it's still metallic if that makes sense. Yeah, so, um, do yeah. submit some more photos of this. We'd love to see it in the C Studios Discord. So when yeah. you are, if you have finished this miniature, then uh, please feel free to send some photos. We can give some feedback as well. Yeah, um, and I would say like with NMM and like everything in miniature painting, it's just practice. So getting some more of these done, I think you're just going to naturally improve just from that alone. Hundred um, percent. Your experiences from doing this will hopefully uh, lead you in a better start point on the next one, and then so on. Okay, finally, we have Saucy IRL. This is a bit of a different one. Uh, they say, having a three bears situation, uh, lost the clear stands, so decided to use these thematic giant tourmaline crystals. Uh, also took this opportunity to shade and glaze with Citadel contrasts. I'm struggling to find the right cohesion between glazing, unpolished gems, and subtle light refraction and placement of colors on these crystals. Okay, so first off, right off the bat, it's quite cool actually to see... Uh, your execution on all of these and kind of your your practice of the blending across these and you've done like different styles i think that's quite cool um we've spoken on previous episodes of the podcast about like if you're looking to improve your painting having like multiple of the same thing and doing it over and over again you kind of see this like gradual improvement um and i think we are actually seeing that here definitely um, yeah. i think not just in terms of the blending execution but just in terms of like choice of the colors and things like that so i'm imagining that what's going on here with this sort of more uh, rainbow looking one is that kind of prism effect you see with light where you look yeah. at, uh, where you look at a prism and you can see all of the individual uh, colors coming out of it uh, with like the light refraction and things like that. Um, for me personally, I don't think that's something that can really be gotten away with at this scale on a miniature of this size. I think that's probably something no. a bit crazy uh, to shoot for, if you get what I mean. I, I, I understand. It's a great experiment. The use of color is really interesting, like the way you've got all the colors to go on there. I, I, I think I always say this, I and mean, this is when I first saw it, I thought, I, I thought it was very busy uh, just in colors and tones. Um, especially when you've got a model on it, a sister's model that is super detailed and has loads going on. Um, I, I, I just thought it was a bit too much personally. That's just my personal opinion. Um, we, me, me and George have spoken about it and looked at all three of them. And I, I think there's one that you've done that's definitely very, very, very good. And I think it, for me is the instinctive one that I would go with if it were my miniature, which is the one at the end. It is the blue one. Um, 
the, the subtlety, I mean, blending is something that you c- can be done in all different manners. It can be done quite harshly, it can be done quite smoothly, et cetera. And there's, it, that's more of an aesthetic choice of how you want that blending to look. Um, however, what you've done with the blue one at the end on the right is just really good. I think that you've got nice subtle transitions. You've got areas of interest where it is brighter, it's darker. Um, I think it looks a lot more natural being like, obviously you're trying to do this crystal tourmaline kind of like material. I think that those colors being the way that they are in there looks more natural than harsh, stark lines or bands of color and things like that. Um, I think it's something as well that's going to suit a miniature they put on it because it's kind of more similar colors and tones. It's going to complement the model a lot more. Um, when you start having like three, four or five colors on something like that, I think it's going to be just a little bit too distracting because I think ultimately you do want the focus to be the miniature itself rather than the, the basing that it stood on. Yeah. I think, Basing is really, really, it's really hard to balance all the time, isn't it? Because you want something really, really nice and cool and interesting, but you also want it to complement the miniature. So it's, you can kind of go too far one way or another. It's either too plain or it's too busy and so yeah. on. So it is hard to strike that balance. Um, but I think just in terms of color choice, and e- even if you want to go more specific than that, I think the blending is a lot nicer on this one. Yeah. And um, perhaps from the practice, like you said, with the Citadel contrast, I think perhaps you've done this one first and you worked way up to this one. Um, I think either way, uh, that's the one that I would go with personally. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think cool experiment. Um, but I, like I said, I think it's asking a bit too much to execute at this scale, kind of of any, any yeah. painter, really. No, I definitely, I definitely agree. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with the blue one if it was if it was my call. Yeah, so. but, uh, kudos for experimentation. Really cool to see. Uh, but that's one we go with. Well, thank you everyone who has submitted for this episode of Critique Clinic. If you'd like your miniatures featured on a future episode, and you'd like myself and James to give you some feedback on what you're painting, then do check the link to our Patreon in the description of this episode. And as well as Critique Clinic, you'll also gain access to hundreds of PDF and video tutorials super high quality on a whole bunch of techniques, miniatures, color schemes, things like that. And you also get some really cool benefits for the Paint Perspective podcast as well, some ad-free and some extended episodes. Yeah, so a big thank you to everyone who submitted photos for this week's episode. Really appreciate it. I hope you liked the entries and also the feedback. And we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Critique Clinic. See you soon.